फ्रेंड्स इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस द मोस्ट बर्निंग इश्यू इन जीएसटी अक्रॉस द कंट्री फॉर ऑल द टैक्स पेयर्स ऑन फेक इन वॉइसिस विच हैज बीन इश्यूड वाइट सर्कुलर 171 सेवेंटी वन ऑफ द सी बी आई सी या डे अगो ऑल्सो वी विल डिस्कस इन द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ द वीडियो द ड्यूटीज एंड रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज ऑफ अ बोनाफाइड रेसिपियंट ऑफ गुड्स और सर्विसेज फॉर नॉन पेमेंट ऑफ जी एस टी बाय द मैलाफाइड सप्लायर फर्स्ट ऑन फेक इन वॉइसिस द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट इश्यू टू अंडरस्टैंड इन केस ऑफ फेक इन वॉइसिस is that an invoice can be called as fake especially when there is a issuance of invoice with gst but there is no underlying supply of goods or services corresponding to the issuance of the invoice many a times many of the large dealers also indulge themselves in transactions which they feel is regular since there is no gst loss to the government but that can come within the purview of fake invoices for example in fact one of the tax payers had indulged in this kind of transaction and there was a very serious prosecutory action against him wherein there was a circular transaction between 6 to 7 companies wherein due to a issue regarding a bank transaction a bank loan the tax payer had uh, issued invoices from one company to the another just to increase the turnover even there was a value addition and there was no gst loss to the government but the underlying issue was that it had issued invoices without supply of goods or services and therefore there was very serious action against the tax payer so it is very very important many a times tax payers to transfer the input tax credit from one of their companies to the other they issue an invoice of services terming it as business auxiliary services from the company where there is a excess itc to a company which requires input tax credit under gst these are transactions which would be covered by fake invoice transactions issue question is in case a issues an invoice to b without underlying supply of goods or service and b takes the input tax credit and further transfers the input tax credit to c what is the liability of a b and c let us understand one by one in case of a it has not taken any faulty input tax credit and therefore an action under section 122 can be initiated on a the liability of a would be to the extent of 100% of the tax involved as penalty b which has taken the input tax credit on such invoice fraudulently may be liable under section 74 for payment of tax interest and penalty on this transaction so b is the most liable in this case however once b is made liable there cannot be an initiation of action on a on the same issue what is the liability of c there the circular is silent a very important issue over here is across the country now the department has started targeting l2 recipient in our example c whose supplier supplier has done a mischief the question is can there be action on these kind of l2 or l3 suppliers the circular has relied on section 122 subsection 1 capital a which requires and provides that in case there has been 
a non compliance at a faulty input tax credit availed by c and c is the final beneficiary and the transaction has happened with the instance and under the direction of c only then he can be penalized with a penalty in the instant case very important to note please go through section 122 1 capital a the word used is and so c has to be proved to be the final beneficiary of the fraudulent input tax credit and he has to be proved to be the mastermind of this transaction only then an action under 122 can be taken action against a b and c under 132 which provides for imprisonment for any tax amount due which is more than 1 crore to 5 crores or more than 5 crores that action under 132 for imprisonment and prosecution can be taken against a b and c all three depending upon the facts and circumstances of the case it has also been provided and the circular has been kept wide open to state that there can be many issues of fake invoices many circular and complicated transaction through banking channels for fake invoices and action has to be taken on that basis and on every instance based on the circumstances of the case so while circular 171 clarifies certain issues yet it leaves the door wide open for departmental action based on facts and circumstances of different cases friends more critical than this issue is in case of a bona fide recipient what is its liability where there has been a supply of goods or services input tax credit has been taken by the recipient it is appearing in its gstr 2b the supplier has filed his gstr 3b but the supplier's gstin has been cancelled ab initio or the supplier's supplier's gstin has been cancelled ab initio in this case what is the liability under gst of the bona fide recipients in our example l two recipients or even l1 recipients our respectful submission in this case is that as per the press release issued by the cbic itself dated may 2018 it clarifies that the bona fide recipient cannot be penalized directly other than in case if the supplier is missing it has closed down its business or it has gone insolvent so in case the supplier is existing or the supplier supplier who has defaulted is existing then there can be no action directly on the bona fide recipient in this case another important uh, issue which has been held in favor of the taxpayers is in case of cancellation of the registration of the supplier ab initio it has been categorically mentioned by the honorable high court of calcutta in the case of lgw industries reiterated in the case of sanchita kundu and has been held again by the madras high court in the case of dy bethel enterprises that in case there has been a cancellation of registration ab initio then from the date of the cancellation if there has been any purchase by the recipient only then the input tax credit would be required to be reversed however if before the date of the cancellation of the supplier gsti if any purchase has been made by the recipient then no action can be taken directly on the recipient friends a similar judgment of the apex court i would like to rely on in my respectful legal submission is in the case of apex arise india limited 
versus Union of India in the case of Delhi VAT, where it has been held by the Honorable Apex Court that the bona fide recipient cannot be asked to do the impossible. The doctrine of impossible performance would guard the bona fide recipients in this case. The recipient cannot be asked to run after the suppliers and see whether they are existing or not existing. It is the liability of the department to see that the suppliers whose registration is cancelled, why they have been granted registration in the first place. As far as the recipient is concerned, the re machinery with the recipient is to check whether the supplier has filed its 3B, whether the supplier has filed its GSTR 1 and corresponding input tax credit is appearing in its GSTR 2B or not. Again, the recipient has to identify the supplier. In case the supplier is identified by the recipient, then in my respectful submission, action should not be taken under against the bona fide recipient until and unless it has been proved under 122 1 capital A that it is the recipient who is the mastermind of the transaction. It is my respectful submission that in this case also further circular is required by the CBIC to clarify its stand in this case so that the field officers are aware of what action is required to be taken and bona fide recipients are not harassed and they are allowed to carry on their businesses seamlessly. Thank you very much for watching. Do share this video for maximum dissemination of knowledge. Thank you very much.